My hair wasn't always growing this fast. They, they, they. Welcome back my friends. This is part four of my hair growth series. In this video series, I've talked about the products that I use, the supplements that I take, and the foods that I eat. But in this video, we're gonna be looking at my hair growth over time as an adult from ages 18 to 24. After nine months of growing at my buzz cut, my hair was noticeably longer, but nothing compared to the hair growth that I'm experiencing currently. I love looking back at my life and seeing how I've changed over time. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how my lifestyle at the time affected my hair growth. When I was 18, I was really focused on getting my curls back after some pretty severe heat and chemical damage. If you haven't already seen that video, you can check it out in my hair journey series over here. Even though I switched on my hair products, stopped using silicones and did get my hair to become a little bit curlier, I still had some straight pieces that would not curl at all, not with any kind of products, not with finger coiling, not with anything. So I was desperate to grow out my hair as fast as possible. But my hair felt like it was growing so slowly or not even growing at all. Looking back at photos of six months of hair growth, it doesn't even really look like my hair grew that much. Um, at the time, I was trying so hard to stretch out my curls as much as possible during styling so that my hair would blend in with the straight pieces and I, I could give the illusion of having my hair be as long as possible. And even with that, there really isn't that much of a difference after six months, even though the after picture is me like trying to stretch out my curls. I was super frustrated because I felt like I was doing everything that I was supposed to. I stopped straightening my hair. I was using silicone free products. I was using the best products that I could find but my hair was still not growing fast. I just kind of accepted that it was my genetics, my hair just grows slow, and I didn't even look at my lifestyle at all. When I was 18, I was the fast food queen. Like I loved eating out so much. My favorite thing to do was to go to eat with my friends who I knew couldn't eat as much as me because they never finished their food. So when I went out to eat out with them, I would get to eat my own plate and then I would get to eat everyone else's too. And it was something that I really enjoyed. <laughs> Eating out was such a huge part of my life and kind of what my relationships were based around at the time. Part of me was afraid of changing at all. I'd become so accustomed to eating junk food all the time that I was almost addicted to it. And it felt so good to eat all of this greasy, fatty food, at least in the short term. But it was really starting to affect my skin, my energy levels, and my hair growth. When I was 19, I switched gears and I became very focused on what I was putting inside of my body. And I really wanted to lose all that weight that I gained the year prior in my first year of university. And I wanted to look really good for my trip to Cuba that summer. I wanted to lose weight fast, but at the same time, I still wanted to grow up my straight ends. And that year I actually came across a book called The Vitamin Bible. And this really sparked my initial interest in nutrition. And I realized for the first time that what I put into my body could affect everything for my hair, my skin, and my energy levels. In typical Amanda fashion, I was really intense about it. I cut my calories in half. I started exercising every single day. I cut out all the processed junk food and I put myself on a really torturous low carb diet and ate so many eggs, like a disgusting amount of eggs. I suspected that I wasn't meeting my nutritional needs. So I started taking supplements to help fill in some of the gaps. But unfortunately, my caloric intake was so low that not even supplements could help me. My hair was falling out and growing even slower than when I was only eating junk food. Like I said before, I was still trying to grow out those straight pieces and I still had a lot of them. And I was really frustrated because I felt like I was doing everything right. I was exercising, I was supplementing, I was eating what I thought was a healthy diet. But all of this dieting and calorie restriction was being reflected in my slow growing hair, my tired eyes, and lots of mood swings. Things changed when I turned 20. I was in love with food again, and I was in love with Alex, my then boyfriend and now husband. I was really cozying the relationship and I felt loved no matter what I looked like. I lost my desire to look perfect all the time and Alex started introducing me to some really delicious, rich, fatty food. And these kinds of foods didn't really seem to have any effect on him. So I thought, why can't I? He found ways to even make simple foods fatty and heavy, like peanut butter sandwiches. He would take a thick layer of butter and smear it on top of the toast and take a really thick, 
scoop of peanut butter and spread it on top. It was so delicious. I was obsessed. Eating all of these rich, delicious, fatty foods made me feel good. And it reminded me of Alex. So I just started eating this way all the time, even when we weren't together. Little did I know that Alex didn't eat this way all the time. He just fed me these foods because he knew that I liked them and I enjoyed going to fancy places. It was a lot of deep fried omelets and bloody steaks. I was gaining relationship weight pretty quickly, but I didn't care. After all of the starvation of my previous year, it felt really good to be eating all of these really dense fatty foods. And I finally cut off all the stray pieces from my damaged past, but it took me two years to get to that point. And two years felt like a really long time to grow up my hair. And don't get me wrong, I was super happy to get rid of all those stray pieces and my hair looked good, but it felt like it was growing so slowly. When I look at my hair growth over a six month period compared to now, it is ridiculous. It almost seemed like it was stuck at the same length for months. When I turned 21, I moved out for the first time and I felt like I really didn't know how to take care of myself. It was my first time preparing meat, something that my mother had always done because she always did the cooking when I lived at home. And I was absolutely revolted by this. Like I was so disgusted and I gave myself food poisoning on so many occasions that I was just becoming really put off by the whole cooking atmosphere. I was living with Alex at this time and for whatever reason, I wanted to do everything on my own. I wanted to do all my grocery shopping. I wanted to cook all my own meals. I insisted on it. I was so stubborn. I lost a lot of weight at this time, not intentionally, but mostly because I despised cooking and I was trying to save money. So when I would cook my meals, I would try to make them last for as long as possible. The only things I really knew how to make were omelets, chicken, but not really because like I said, I gave myself food poisoning a bunch of times and milkshakes with Greek yogurt. And that's pretty much what I ate every single day. Oh yeah, and pasta. I had a lot of pasta. Pasta was easy. I couldn't really mess up pasta. Alex thought it was so weird for eating the same foods every single day. My hair felt like it was stuck at the same length for months. These pictures are actually eight months apart. And just looking at them just brings back all of those feelings of frustration that I had with my hair not growing. And I kind of just gave up on growing my hair at all together. Like I was sick of the stagnation. I was sick of worrying about it. So I kind of stopped caring. At 22, I went in a completely different direction and food was my best friend again. And I started eating more of it and loving it again. I felt pretty terrible from my previous year of eating and I was really looking to cleanse my body and feel good. I scoured the internet for answers and I read about people who had cleansed their bodies using raw fruits and vegetables and the results were pretty impressive. It made a lot of sense to me that cutting out processed foods and junk foods and fatty foods would be beneficial. So I jumped on it overnight and I felt so much better. My body really felt like it was taking this time to detox and cleanse out all of the nasty foods that I had eaten in the past. But it could also just be that eating raw fruits and vegetables was a lot easier to digest than the nasty processed foods that I had been eating. The way that I was eating was very low in protein. I didn't eat any lentils or beans. I hardly ate any nuts and seeds. I was mostly just eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and fruit juices. And for me, this felt really good at the time. Unfortunately, my hair was growing really slow at the time, although I wasn't too concerned about that back then. Um, looking back at photos, when I initially started eating this way, my hair was very full. And after a few months of the low protein diet, my hair started to look really thin and it just was not growing. But I felt better than I ever had in my life. So I thought that that was the best thing for me at the time. I had Marley locks in back to back for two thirds of the year. And because my hair was growing so slowly, I was actually able to keep them in for a really long time, which was great because the process took an entire day and it was kind of pricey. So it was really great at the time that I could stretch them out. After eight months of protective styling, I really didn't have that much growth to show for it. The before picture is the day before I had my Marley locks put in and the after photo is the night that I took them out and in the after photo my hair is actually in a two strand twist and stretched out so it's actually even longer than it really is and even with that it, there still isn't that big of a difference between the before and the after and eight months is a really long time so I expected some growth but there really wasn't that much at all 
After I took my Marley locks out, I decided to go in a different direction and I was ready to say goodbye to my curls. And this is when I started my lock journey. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can check out my hair journey series. I became less focused on what I looked like on the outside and more focused on the inside, my happiness and what I wanted out of life. I actually don't have really very many photos of my locks because I kind of stopped photographing myself because I just didn't care about that stuff at that time. I was doing a lot of juice cleansing, a lot of juice fasting, and I got rid of my Instagram. I got rid of my phone. Um, I have an Instagram again now, but oddly to this day, I still don't have a cell phone. When I was 23, I became pregnant and I'd recently just buzzed off all of my locks and my hair was less than an inch long. At this point in my life, I gave up on the raw food diet and even if I wanted to keep that going, my pregnant body would reject it. If I needed fat, my body wouldn't accept anything else. I was still eating a lot of raw food, but I started incorporating a lot of cooked foods back into my life, like red lentils, sweet potato, potato, corn pasta, and I was eating a lot of Lara bars, like going through boxes and boxes of Lara bars. Oh yes, and coconut milk every single day. I was obsessed with coconut milk. This was the fastest that my hair had ever grown up until this point, and at the time I attribute a lot of this to the pregnancy hormones and not so much my change in lifestyle and diet. My buzz cut grew to a teeny weeny afro within six months just before I was about to head to Costa Rica, which was a significant amount of growth compared to what I'd experienced in the past but nothing compared to my present day hair growth. At the time, I felt like my hair should be growing super fast because that's what everybody says happens when you're pregnant, but my growth seemed pretty ordinary. Fast forward to postpartum, I'm 24 years old. I just gave birth to baby Naya in the jungle. If you'd like to learn more about my Costa Rican jungle experience, you can check out my video called What the Jungle Did to My Hair over here. After nine months of growing at my buzz cut, my hair was noticeably longer, but nothing compared to the hair growth that I'm experiencing currently. Since I was pregnant, I was expecting my hair to be growing really fast, but my hair growth was pretty ordinary. My hair growth had slowed down even more after I gave birth. My husband and I were alone in the jungle and the demands of being a new mom kept me away from eating fairly often. After I'd finished feeding Naya, I'd very often fall asleep with her and go without eating. I'd stopped taking my prenatal vitamins because I'd ran out of them and I couldn't get them in Costa Rica. I still had some B12 drops left over, which I took once in a while just to make sure I was covered. Um, I thought I could get everything else from my diet. After Naya was born, I took a photo with her outside and then six months later, I took a photo in the exact same pose and there's hardly any of a difference in my hair growth over six months, especially to the hair growth that I'm experiencing right now. The difference is huge. As Naya got older, it became a lot easier to feed myself and cook. I was eating a lot of root vegetables, an obscene amount of coconut milk, and a ton of spinach. I was concerned with my calcium intake because of all the breastfeeding, so I was trying really hard to get everything through my diet. I had purple bags under my eyes, itchy little bumps on my skin, my teeth hurt, my joints hurt. I felt like I was falling apart. I started wearing makeup to hide a lot of these symptoms. I was eager to get back to Canada to get some foods and supplements that I either couldn't find in Costa Rica or that were difficult to get my hands on. I was really focused on getting some food-based vitamins, an iron supplement, multivitamins, any bone supplement. I felt so depleted. By the time I got back to Canada, that was the beginning of my super fast hair growth and that is when I started taking care of my body consistently. That's when I filmed the three years no product video showing me using Diva Curl for the first time was filmed and that's when all the changes that I've been talking about in this series started happening. New supplements, a healthier diet, and a new hair care regimen, I felt like a new person. To learn more about my fast hair growth, you can watch parts one to three in this series if you haven't already. So what have I learned? First, I make sure that I'm getting all of the vitamin minerals and healthy whole foods that I need. And I noticed a huge difference just within a few weeks. Not just for me though, but for my husband too. I don't obsess over ratios of fats, carbohydrates, and protein. I just listen to my body and do what feels best. I can talk more about this later, so let me know in the comments if you'd like that. And even if you feel like you're doing everything right to make your body as healthy as possible, your body will give you clues. Your hair growth is one of them. So if you notice that your hair is growing a lot slower than usual or growing slow in general, you might be stressed. You might not be sleeping enough. You might not be eating as healthy as you usually do. 
or something else. That being said, some people can eat loads of junk food and still have clear skin and fast growing hair. Genetics is an important factor, but I believe genetics sets the limit for how fast our hair can grow, but we ultimately have control over what we do within that limit. Like when you're a child, if you starve yourself, you probably aren't going to grow, even if your genetics are set for you to be six feet tall but if you live healthfully, this is more likely to happen. I'm going to be going into more detail on each of the stages that I talked about in this video and talking about how my lifestyle at the time affected my hair growth, so you can subscribe to see those. Part one will be talking about what eating only junk food did to my hair growth. Amanda of the past was so intense. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mwah.